Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to make this beautiful yoke bustier blouse with rough fold sleeves. So you can see the yoke neckline as it is right there on the thumbnail. Okay. So it has beautiful ruffle sleeves on both sides as well. So I decided to make a 720 degrees peplum for it. Although what we have on the thumbnail is actually a gown. So it's the same process. You can go ahead and attach your skirt or you can join me in the 720 degrees. So if this is what you want to learn, stay till the end of this. I've already started drafting and I noticed that I lost my video clips. Okay. So, but that is not a problem. I'll simply explain to you what I just did here on my basic bodice pattern. So, the first thing I did on the basic bodice pattern is to divide my shoulder line. This is my shoulder line, my natural neckline, this one. From here to here, I placed my tape and I divided by two equal parts. That is how I got this line. And with my pattern ruler, you can see this line, I connected it to the bust point line. This is the bust point line, BP. Now, from the shoulder, this is the shoulder, I determine my yoke line. This is my yoke. So my yoke line, I determined it at seven and a half, okay? So, but how do you know how to determine your uh, yoke line? This is a, actually a plus size. So, what I did was the difference between my bust point and my under bust point is four inches. So, I placed that four inches on the on this point and made my bust radius. So, when I made my bust radius on this line, this is where I got it. So, if you look here, you can see I have about 1.25 away far away from the bus radio so that's how to determine your yoke line so this is my yoke line that is my yoke line right now so in between this line and this yoke line i came in from here from this midpoint i came out by 0 0.75 and came out by 0 0.75 to create my over bust that, this is what I did. I created this way and flipped my pattern ruler this way and created the over bust. I believe you understand that. Then, looking at um, the yoke, there are several ways you can make. You can make it straight, I mean the yoke, but I don't want to make it straight. So what I did was from the yoke line, I simply came down by one inch. From the yoke line, I came down by one inch place my pattern ruler like this to this first that line can you see to create a little illusion to it then i i we have two options you can see i have two lines for this that so if you don't want to replace any that simply go ahead and place your pattern ruler from this that into the armhole but if you want it straight, it means straight is like this. It means there will be a shortage because of this that on the yoke. So you have to extend your line from here to here. I extended it by 1.5. So this is 1.5. So once I got the 1.5, I placed my pattern ruler at that 1.5 and recreated a new armhole. So that is exactly what I did right here. Now, for the neckline, for the neckline, I came down from my natural neckline because I don't want the yoke to be too big. So I came down by one inch, the neckline to be too big, and I came out from the natural neckline by one inch. So when I came out by one inch, I did what? I created my yoke neckline. So now we want to go over to the underboss. This is the center front. So for the underboss line, we want to contour the underboss line. So the underboss I'm working with. So now coming over to the underboss, I'm working with underboss circumference of 37. Divide by 4 will give me 9.25. So I'll place my ruler, my tape rule. 
from the center front and I'll mark my under bust circumference of 9.25. So whatever I have left here, I have one and a half left. So I'm going to share from here 0 0.25. That is from this dart leg 0 0.25 and the rest of 1.25. I'll share it here. Okay. So let me just check, confirm something. Because the head of this uh, tape is not good, so I like to use, okay, so I just want to be sure, okay, alright, alright, so, okay, so now I'm going to place my pattern ruler this way. And connect the busts, uh, the shape of the bust curve. Then this one will go over here, from here to here, and from here to here. Okay, so it's actually a plus size anyway. So I just blended this part, that's what I did right there. So we are good to go and now we can cut out this pattern. So cutting out this pattern, I will go ahead and cut so I will be able to close up my boss that as well. So make sure you replace this that before you contour the under boss. So I am going to cut and separate the back from the front. So I'll just go into my neckline. I freehanded my neckline anyway. So you can still do that for, for yours. And I'll go into the arm. So, so I'll stop at this point because my yoke is going to also stop at this point. So the yoke will simply go like this into this okay so it's supposed to be straight anyway but i just decided to make it come in a little so i have my yoke and i've separated it so for the center front the center front is on fold for this it's going to be on fold Go to the waistline. Okay. Then I'll go into the dart because I want to separate F1. So that is my F1, and this is the F2. I just go ahead and close up the bust that I'll close up my bust that right away. So that is that and that is how we we are going to attach it so i'll just match it up to see if it's actually matching so here is actually matching and this is the the yoke so you can see by the time we go ahead and stitch this part it matches up to this point so let me cut off the arm hole. so that is why we replaced that 1.5 so assuming we did not replace that 1.5, when sewing this yoke, once we sew this and sew this, we have a shortage. So that is what we actually replaced. So I will separate this. We are done. Then we will be talking about the back pattern. So for the back pattern, it's actually very simple. Just few alterations. That's what we are making for the back pattern. First is to contour the under, but there's no that is that less. So I'll just 
go and uh, sorry contour the center back coming by 0 0.75 for my center back and take it off to the neckline and replace what I have there so my back is um, uh, the measurement of my waist divided by 4 is 9.75 so from here to that contour line is 9.75 and the measurement of my bust area is 11 so from here to here is to here is 11 inches okay so what i did is just replacement of the that that's all then the back neckline i'm going to sew it if you want to create a yoke for it you can but for me i'm just going to sew it directly without a yoke so all i can do is to come down from the natural neckline i can come down by two inches and come out by one inch like I did in the other one so if I do that I can use my pattern ruler if I will get the neckline I'm looking for but if I don't get I can just simply do what create the kind of neckline I would like to have at that back so that is all we need so i will create i'm going to cut it off right away and we are done with the back Alright, so that is how the back is going to look like. This is the back. So at the end of the day, you have to check if it matches. And this is the front. So we'll go ahead to cut out the fabric first day. And um, I'm going to also uh, stay the lining as well. All right, so now I'm done cutting and you can see what I have. So I left the yoke till we get to the yoke, then I'll cut out the yoke. So the next thing I'll do is to make my uh, notches on the bust point. I have my lining and my fabric right here and I have this also lining fabric interfacing. I also have the same lining and fabric interfacing. So I just make notch on my bust point. The under bust, you can see it right there. And I'll just make my notch here on the under bust. Okay. So I'm going to take off what I have on this pattern after I have made my notches. So I have my back pattern. Okay. So I'll keep it aside too. So I'm going to place my lace on top of the, I'll separate the lining from the interfacing and make sure you hair stay. So I also hair stay, as you can see, you can see my hair stay right there. So I'll bring in the uh, fabric I'm going to work with. So I'm going to just simply arrange the flower patches. So it depends on how you want your flower patches to flow. Okay, so we have the green and we have the colored. So I'll just decide to place it the way I think it will come out well for me. So I'll just go to the ironing table now and place this. So once I cut out how I want, I wish it to be. To look like if I just cut it out now the next thing I'm going to do is to stitch around it before 
iPad. So let me do ditching the uh, brocade. I'm actually using a brocade fabric. Okay. So this is what it looks like brocade. So I have to place and stitch all around it. So I did that for the back piece as you can see. So since you are working on the back piece, I'll separate that on the front piece, I'll separate the back piece. So now the next thing we want to do is to pad. So to pad, I'll just come in with my uh, pattern once again and I'm going to create that uh, pad. So to create that pad, this is my bust point and this is my bust point. So my under bust difference there from here to a uh, bust point to under bust is 4 inches which is my bust radius. So I'll come and mark that 4 inches. So I'll place my 4. So at this point I like to follow what I have here like this. I like to follow it like that. This is the center front. So I'll just follow that whatever I have like this. Then here, I'm going to mark out my 4, 4 inches. So I'll just go this way. This is the part at which the bust is going to sit. So that's why I'm making use of the bust ready. So this is what I'm going to use to cut out my wadding. So I'll simply cut it out. But before I do that, make sure you have already noted the part that is up. The part that is up. We have the bust point already. So I'll just go ahead and cut out my pad. So I'll use this to pad my uh, bust here. Okay. So on the under bust, I'll simply do what cut out. So this is it. So by the time we sew, we have everything matching up accordingly. So this is my wadding. I'll just go ahead and for the front piece of this, I'll keep it on fold. This is the center front area. I'll just keep it on fold and leave some inches to add allowance. So I'll quickly This is what my padding is all about. So I have to place my hair stay all over. So I'll just go over to my machine now and I'm going to sew from the end. Okay, so this is how I'm going to sew to form the bust tip. So I'll do that for this as well. Give it a good press. Do that for lining and then we'll proceed to the sewing of the yoke. I have the yoke right now and I'll be using my pattern for my yoke. So to cut it out, I have my two mesh, okay? So you can go with any two mesh of your choice for the yoke part. So I'm going to double my two mesh and cut out my yoke so you can see me trying to double it okay so just one and two and then i'll also find the mid point okay because this part is going to be on fold so i'll just go ahead and secure it with my pin and I'll add my seam allowances all around. Now I'm done sewing the yoke at 0 0.5 inch as you can see. So I'll just go ahead and reduce it. So I'm reducing it so it will be neat after I turn it. So you can see I'm reducing it very, very, very closely. So if you're working with yoke, like this you have to reduce it very very closely but doing that you also need to be very careful 
when you do that okay so you don't cut off the stitching lines all right so now i'll go ahead and do what and turn it this is the front and this will be at the back so i'll give it a good press now so i'm done with the preparing the yolk and i've given it a good press so after ironing it nicely you have to run a stitch to hold both fabric and lining everything together for the yolk so i come in with this and i'm going to sew midline to midline so i'll first go ahead and attach my yoke i'll hold it down with my pin sew to this point and sew to this point let me do what i'm going to do is to turn it over and place my notches so always place notches very important so i'll just do that now i'll just place notches as i can so if you are doing that please you need to be careful as well so now i will lay my lining so i'll pin my lining at the center like this i'll go back to the machine follow the stitching line to the end now i'm done with the front both lining and fabric so this is what i have all over so so I will take off the front and we will be working on the back. So this is what we have on the back. I will simply go ahead and sew, leaving my zipper allowance of one inch. I will sew my neckline and turn. I will do that to this one. Done with the back bodies, I have turned it and ironed it with lining. Okay, so I am going to pick up each one of it now. So let me just work on this. So I will simply pick up the this part I want to work with. I just want to work on this and this. So I will just do this, match it up together. As you can see, put right side to right side of the back and use the lining for the back. I'm going to flip the lining. So make sure it's at the edge and I'll flip everything this way. So I'll go over to my machine now. I'll sew at 0.5. Now we are done with the upper bodies. I've given it a good press on the side. So the full bodies is ready. So now we want to start working on the peplum. So the peplum we are working with is 720 degrees. So when working on 720 degrees, you'll be using your waist circumference. So my waist circumference is 40 plus 2 inches of my zipper allowance. One on one side and one on the other side is 42. So since we are working on 720, it means we need two circles. That is 360 and 360 put together to make it 720. So I will divide my waist by 2. So if I do that, I will have 21. So for each 21, I'm working for 1360. So I'll be using 6.28 to divide that. So if I do that, I will have about 3.3 inches. So I'm going to cut only one circle on paper. Okay, I love to always uh, create 3.3. So I'm going to use my paper for my... 360 so when folding 360 even if you are working with your fabric if this is your fabric you are going to kiss it to this point and once you have done that next you do what you kiss it again to this point so you can see this part i have here this particular tip that is what i'm going to use now to as the radius so the radius we are working with is 3.3, .3, which is approximately 3.25, okay? So I'll just go ahead and to place my uh, tape and measure 3.25. I'll do the same, 3.25, that is the radius, 3.25. But then I need to get the length so the actual length of this um a peplum is 10 inches so i'll just add up my paper now so i will be able to have up to 10 inches length of my peplum all right so now 
I've gotten the radius at from here to here is the radius at 3.25. So I'm going to take the length of this peplum. So for this peplum, I'm working with 10 inches. Okay. I will work with 10 inches, everything, both the sewing and the so by the time I sew down and up, I'll be left with nine inches. Okay. So that is the radius I'm working with. So I simply go ahead and cut. So this, what I'm cutting here is only 360 degrees. But I'm going to make two of it. So I'll just, on my fabric, I'll only use this pattern to cut two for each. Two for each. So I'll just go ahead and cut the radius. So this is what I'm going to use. Two of this. That is what I'm using for each of my peplum right now. So I'll place this on my fabric after hair staying it. So I'm working with a plain double satin fabric. So I'll just go ahead and you know hair stay then cut out this circle i'll cut four of it for lining and for fabric then later i'll join them cut in between here and join it together so let me do that so now i have four pieces of my door face satin fabric and i'm cutting out the radius now i've also hair stayed all of them so i've arranged the four of them and i'll just go ahead and do what and cut it because i'm going to join them together that is what makes it 720 so you can see so i just pick up this and this the way it is and i'll go and sew pick up this and this and so so i'll sew them now come back all right so now i've sewn my crinoline and i've sewn my hemming gum so i'm going to top stitch so in top stitching, I'll just flip all these seams to the parts of the lining. Uh, the part I have the crinoline, which will be the lining, and I'll sew very little from beginning to the end. Now I'm done with the peplum. Okay, so the 720 is ready. So this is my point of joining. So I've ironed it and given it a good press that is the, for the upper layer so now we'll be placing another second layer on top of this so we'll come back we'll come back with what we have on the pattern so the only thing we are going to do is the first one was at 10 inches so i'm going to take the measurement of this at six inches because i want it to be shorter so I will still cut it out and repeat the same process I did for the front. So the only difference is that we have um, the other, the upper layer. The first layer, we have it longer than this. So I'm cutting this out as you can see. I'm going to cut it out at 6 inches. So this is what I have for the upper layer. Okay, so I just did a combination of the two uh, colors. So this is 360, 6 inches um, height. And this is, sorry, this is 720. Okay, this is 720. But the length of this one is higher than this. So this one is going to be on top. So I'll just go back to my... Uh, machine now I'm going to place this at the point I joined can you see that 
and I'm going to sew the both together then we'll attach it to the bodies now I've put it together so you can see what I have so you have to make sure the center line matches at the center line and I'm going to place that at the center front of the dress so now I'll come in with the dress now and I'm going to find sew it only on the fabric bustier part so I'll just put it together make a notch or secure with my pin so here is my center front so at this center front I'm going to stitch from this center right now so I'll stitch from here to the end I'll stitch from here to the end let me do that successfully attached the peplon okay so I've attached it to the waistline as you can see right here so the next thing we want to do is only on the fabric so the lining is still there so in order to have a perfect inseam finishing i'm going to pick up this lining this way okay so i will have the peplon all of them inside the dress so i'm going to match uh, that to that that to that okay so i'll secure it with my pin and arrange it then i'll match it from the beginning okay so i'm going to sew from the beginning let me do that so i'm done sewing so this is what it looks like after you tuck in the peplum okay inside so you have to make sure the lining matches up you can see it matches up the seam lines all the seams matches up as you can see so the next thing i'll do is to turn it to the right side can you see so i just go ahead and do what and turn to the right side although this might be a little difficult but just keep turning it bringing it out like that like that just take it easy and just keep turning turning till i bring it out so once i brought it out i'll go ahead you can see we have a neat finishing inside i'll just give it a little press to relax it appropriately okay so that is it so after doing that we'll now go over to the sleeves to the zipper okay so i'm just going to attach the zipper now i'm done with the zipper i've installed my zipper as you can see so the next thing we want to start right now is to sew the sleeves okay so to sew the sleeves I've already cut out my sleeve pattern. I cut it out with my pattern and I've added my seam allowances, okay, where necessary, all around my sleeve. So now I also have a lining for this sleeve. I actually want to place this, okay because i'm going to sew my ruffles on top of it so you have to cut two of your lace and two of your matching lining so i'll set this aside now and we'll go ahead to construct the ruffles so the ruffles will be sewn just around here okay so i'm going to assume i have the measurement of this ruffle we are going to sew this ruffle from half an inch down to 10 inches so we are going to sew two of it that is 20 inches so this 20 inches length i'm going to multiply it by two and a half 2.5 or three inches because for each ruffle we are going to gather 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 okay so i got 20 multiply by three if you need enough ruffle there is going to give us 60 inches so i'm going to cut out a strip of 60 inches by four inches now inside my crinoline on it so i'll show you how to go up. Cut out the 20 inches times three so here i have 60 inches length and the width i have here 
is 10 inches okay so when placed on fold you'll be having five inches when we place it on full okay so here you can see there are two and i double hair stay i place my hair stay twice okay to give it that uh, firmness so i'll be using one to demonstrate to you now how to go about this so i'll just go ahead and come in with my three inches crinoline so this is three inches as you can see right here so my crinoline I'm going to place it. I will advise you make a crease line. So what I mean by making a crease line is if you use your iron and define this line, okay? Because this crinoline is going to rest just at the mid line this way. Okay? So I'll have it placed at the mid line. So this way. So the crinoline will be placed in between. Then I'll come in with my my hair, my hemming gum. I'll place my hemming gum. So I'll systematically go over to the ironing table. I'll be ironing with my steam. I'll keep pushing till I make sure. I, the hemming gum lays here so I can even lift it up and place some more like this. I'm done ironing and I have my crinoline inside like I demonstrated so here I use my hemming gum to hold it on both sides okay so the next thing we want to do now is to go over to the machine I'll go over to my machine I'm going to flip this I'm going to flip it this way and close it up. I need to close up the two ends. So once I'm done closing up the two ends, I'll go ahead and pleat this 60 inches. I'm going to pleat it on my machine. I'll pleat it into 20. Remember the measurement we had was 20. So I'm going to pleat it now. So, let's so now I'm done gathering, as you can see. So I have to pleat and pleat and pleat into 20 inches. So the length from here to here is 20 inches. The same with this, 20 inches. So now I'm going to, you can see how I folded that the parts, the beginning part I tucked in. I have to fold it in to face the inside. So I'm going to put it together this way okay you can also put it together this way so that we can have this part at the back so i think i'll put it together this way this part i need it to be below this way so i'll just go ahead and stitch together i'm going to stitch together you can see so this is what i did for this and this so we are going to sew this into the sleeve I'll bring back my sleeve. Like I said, because of this ruffle we made, we have a lining for this sleeve. So I've already marked out the part that is the front sleeve and the back sleeve. So I'll pick up one and I'm going to pick up the part that matches with it. So this is the part that matches with this one. So I'll simply go ahead and place it. So this is how I'm going to place the sleeve. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to sew this sleeve. So I'll flip it this way, go over to my machine and stitch close this sleeve. That, that's the down part of it. Top stitch, give it a good press and flip it back. I'll just flip it back when I'm done. So I'm preparing the both sleeves. So you can see we have the lining inside. And I went ahead to stitch the lining with the brocade. So I'll just work on one of these now to show you. So I'm going to place it in between. So I'll go to my machine, open up, drop my presser foot and stitch. You can also do what? You can also lay it this way if you don't want to stitch in between. In fact, I'm going to stitch here so it will be easy 
for me to stitch. So I will encourage you, or I will, I will advise you, search this part, okay, before you do this. So now I'm going to determine where to drop this sleeve, okay? So I can just give a gap. Let me say this, it has to be on the center or the grain line. So this is the grain line. So I'll just make a little chalk line to show the grain line. So I can come in with my ruler as well and define the grain line appropriately. So this is where I'm going to sew. So I will just step down by one inch. So I'll have a space from here to sew uh, to the basic sleeve. So I'll just step down by one inch. This is my one inch. So I'll go over to my uh, to my machine. I'll place it from here. I'll follow the grain line. So make sure you follow this straight line as you are sewing. So wherever it stops, that is where it stops. Can you see? So I'll sew it right I'm done sewing, stitching on it. So another thing I can do is to tack here and tack here. Can you see? So I'll just tack here and tack here. Then later I'll bring this together and bring it together. So I will just play with it and arrange it appropriately. So I'll just quickly tack here and here and bring some. So now I'm done sewing and I've tacked some parts. Okay, so I have to tack some area as you can see. So this is what it looks like at the inside. So I'm going to put it together now and I'm going to sew off my one one inch this way. So I'll close it up, the both of them. I'm going to close it then, show you how to sew it to the sleeve. I'm sewing the size of the sleeve. So I did it for the both sleeves. So now I'm going to sew this one part. Now I'll use one part to show you how to sew this. So I made a notch at the front part of this sleeve. So this is going to be on the right side of the dress. So I'll bring in the dress. So this is my dress right now. This sleeve will be attached to this. So to do that, I'll simply open up my zipper. So once I open up my zipper, I'm going to turn the sleeve this way, okay? Then I will insert it this way. Then this is the shoulder seam line. I'm going to match it to the notch. You can see the notch, the center grain line. So I'll secure it with my pin right away. I'll secure with my pin. Then I'm going to also open up the armhole seam and match it with the armhole seam so this is the armhole seam i'll just go ahead and tuck in tuck in tuck in so i'll bring in this and match it up to this so now i'm going to sew the sleeve right away. I'll be taking it to the machine and I'll match up all of this area and match up all of them. Then I'll sew around. I'll repeat the same for the other part and we are done with this dress. You can see the sleeve is actually looking beautiful and I've attached it to the bodies of this dress. Okay, So that is how we go, how to go about um, the sewing of this kind of sleeve with as you can see right here okay so if you are new to this channel please kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day like this video share to family and friends drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well thank you once again see you in the next class bye